Monday's arrest warrants for three prosecutors, Zeke Reaounce, Selal Kara and Mehmet Yujek, who oversaw graft investigations into members of government at the time, were issued as revenge by the Interim Justice and Development Party, AK Party, government, some jurists have agreed. Arrest warrants were issued on Monday for the prosecutors, who had already been disbarred by the Supreme Board of Judges and Prosecutors, HSYK, for their role in the major corruption investigations that went public on December 17 and 25, 2013. The warrants were issued after the Bakarki Chief Public Prosecutor's Office requested that the Bakarki Second High Criminal Court order the arrest of the three prosecutors on charges of forming an illegal organization, attempting to topple or incapacitate the Turkish government through the use of force or coercion and preventing it from performing its duties partially or completely. On May 12, the Second Chamber of the HSYK voted to disbar Ounce, Kara, Yujek and Prosecutor Muammar Akas, who launched the December 17 graft probe into several members of then Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan's family, his inner circle and four former ministers, including Iranian businessman Reza Zarab, who was a primary suspect in the probe, as well as a judge, Suleiman Karakol. The board's members were quick to deny that any political influence had affected their decision. As part of the probe, businessmen close to the AK party, four then cabinet ministers and the sons of three of the ministers were detained on December 17, 2013 on charges of corruption. In October of last year, Prosecutor Ekrem Aydner dropped the case against the suspects in the December 17 corruption investigation, claiming that there were no grounds for legal action against them. Bounce was also behind an investigation into Urgenikin, a clandestine terrorist network believed to have been behind been many violent attacks staged for the ultimate purpose of triggering a coup against the government. Several jurists agree that the court's recent decision to arrest the prosecutors was not made in accordance with the principle of judicial independence, but was instead politically motivated. Speaking with today's Zaman, M.T. Cardus, a retired military judge, noted that unless those implicated in the graft investigations are met with a fair trial, no legal process can be launched against the prosecutors, who have been targeted for conducting the investigations into key government figures. It is obvious that the political authority mobilized to punish the prosecutors and seek revenge for their roles in the graft investigation. We can say that the law has completely collapsed with the government's interference. No one has trust in the judiciary or the judicial processes, he stated, adding, the current situation is reminiscent of the coup periods. As the recent incident has confirmed, the right to a fair trial has been violated. Dyar Bakrabar Association President Tahir Elsi agreed that the judicial system has faced an extraordinary period with the breach of the rules of law. According to Elsi, judicial independence has been undermined for nearly two years by interference from the government. He continued, it is obvious that the judiciary is under the control of the government. This most recent instance, regarding the prosecutors, proves that the accusations and the warrants for arrest were not issued with concerns about preserving judicial independence. The government's meddling in the judiciary is quite precise. Especially, it is known how Aunt struggled against the military to prevent it from staging a coup against the civil authority, by investigating the Urgenikin and Sledgehammer, Balias, suspected coup plots. Speaking to today's Zaman regarding the arrest warrants for the prosecutors, Mehmet Alton, a professor of economics at Stanbul University, said that the decision is completely political and is the continuation of a civil coup staged by the AK party government against the judiciary, starting with the drop of the December 17 to 25th graft probe by prosecutor Aidner through the pressure coming from the government. When those who rule the country are involved in an offense, they are punished by the judiciary since the law does not make any difference between the ruling class and those who are ruled. However, the current political administration has destroyed the judiciary and the judicial independence in a manner of the rulers cannot be judged, whatever type of offense they commit. They damaged the essence of rule of law and the judiciary was subordinated to the political administration. In order to prevent those politicians who took part in corruption from being tried for their unlawful acts, 
the government staged a civil coup against the judiciary by redesigning it according to its wishes. Unless this coup is punished before the law, Turkey cannot be normalized in terms of the supremacy of law and judicial independence. While those thieves in reference to the graft suspects are free, many prosecutors, judges and police officers, who have tried to reveal the theft, have been arrested, jailed, or demoted with reassignments, Alton told today's Zaman. Some politicians who spoke with today's Zaman slammed the decision for the arrest, with main opposition Republican People's Party, CHP, Deputy Chairman Erdal Aksunger criticizing the accusations of establishing a terrorist group leveled against the prosecutors. If there is a terrorist group as claimed, then where are the documents that will prove it? The investigations that the prosecutors conducted are labeled as a planned coup attempt. Can any investigation file be a coup attempt? Where is the evidence regarding the accusations against the prosecutors? I explained all the claims of the graft probe and realized that all evidence was collected in line with the law. The decision for the arrest is fully about seeking revenge for the probe, Axunger said. Speaking with today's Zaman, Arzu YLDZ, a reporter who specializes in legal issues and has faced a series of investigations regarding her reports on several key cases concerning the AK party's alleged unlawful practices, stressed that all the legal ground prepared for the arrest of the prosecutor is baseless and is not based on concrete evidence. Even people with little knowledge of law can understand how the charges against the prosecutors are false and fictionalized, YLDZ commented. While those who stored huge amounts of illegal money in shoe boxes are not under the judiciary's scrutiny and are free, those prosecutors who are responsible for unveiling such crimes are systematically subjected to a government crackdown through a judiciary that is under the control of the ruling party, she added. Prosecutor Ounce, along with Kara, are reported by the Turkish media to have crossed into Georgia before Prosecutor Umut Tip requested and received detention warrants and a demand for arrest from the court. Regarding Prosecutor Yücek, media reports said that Yücek left his mobile phone at his home but there is no precise information about where he is and whether he left Turkey for another country. Artvin Governor Kemal Sirid posted a tweet early Tuesday claiming that Ounce and Kara first left the country from the Sarp border gate for Georgia and later crossed into Armenia. However, YLDZ said that the two prosecutors did not flee as the pro-government media and the governor have claimed. She stressed that Ounce will appeal to a higher court for a reversal of the decision and will return to the country after his appeal concludes in the following days. Kara's lawyer, Nyazi Adesoy stated on Tuesday that even though he does not know where Kara is now, he knows that Kara and Ounce will return after they are informed of the court's decision. Meanwhile, YLDZ told today's Zaman that Judge Ewer Kaken, who previously served as the judge of the Tarsa Second High Criminal Court, which ruled for the arrest of prosecutors, and oversaw the investigation of the trucks linked to the National Intelligence Organization, MT, on suspicion of carrying weapons to opposition elements in Syria, was appointed to the Bagraki Second High Criminal Court, which ordered the arrest of the three prosecutors, weeks ago. YLDZ also claimed that Kaken's previous records of misconduct were cleared thanks to his decision to arrest the prosecutors linked to the MT truck investigation. The judges and prosecutors' duty is not to make a decision that will make certain politicians happy. They make their decisions in line with the law by turning a blind eye to all criticism regarding their decisions, YLDZ further commented. Lawyer Omer Duranel, who represents a number of police officers arrested in a government-orchestrated operation conducted against the police force in February, pointed to a series of violations during the process behind the decision to arrest the prosecutors. According to Duranel, Prosecutor Teep should have first taken statements of the three prosecutors before asking for the court to arrest them. Then he would have been able to evaluate the evidence and statements in the correct manner, which would have enabled him to make a fair decision. The lack of this process means that the decision to arrest had already been made by the order of the government regardless of statements and evidence, Turanel pointed out. It is an obvious violation of the prosecutor's right of defense. Also, there are other prerequisites to consider before arresting judges and prosecutors. 
unless they are caught out while committing an indictable offense such as murder, they cannot be arrested. Otherwise, no judge or prosecutor can be imprisoned for their decisions or for implementing the law. Turanel described the decision to arrest the prosecutors as a government act of revenge in retaliation for the massive graft investigation. Even though the HSYK disbarred the prosecutors, it does not create a reason for their arrest since the HSYK's decision is an administrative one, he added. There is no situation that requires a criminal procedure against the prosecutors. The prosecutors are being charged with a coup attempt against the government, but in this case it is the government that has staged a coup against the judiciary by blocking the suspects of the graft probe being tried, as the Parliamentary Corruption Commission exonerated the four then ministers who were suspects in the graft probe in January, and a prosecutor, following government pressure, dropped the accusations against all graft suspects and closed the investigation file. Some politicians told today's Zeman that they also slammed the decision for the arrest, with main opposition Republican People's Party, CHP, Deputy Chairman Ertel Axunger criticizing the accusations of establishing a terrorist group against the prosecutors. If there is a terrorist group as claimed, then where are all the documents that will prove it? Axunger said. The investigations that the prosecutors conducted are labeled as a planned coup attempt. Can any investigation file be a coup attempt? Where is the evidence regarding the accusations against the prosecutors? I explained all the claims of the graft probe and realized that all the evidence was collected in line with the law. The decision for the arrest is fully intended to seek revenge for the probe. Pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, HDP, spokesman Ihan Bilgin also believes the court decision does not tally with judicial independence. The government's influence on the HSYK is a fact that the HDP has refused for years, he said. Judges and prosecutors being pressed with a government-controlled judiciary cannot be acceptable. Additionally, Prosecutor Ounce had announced in January 2014 that Chief Ombudsman Mehmet Nihat Merilu, who acted on Erdogan's behalf, tried to intimidate him into giving up a graft investigation. According to a voice recording, allegedly between Erdogan and his son Bilal Erdogan published on social media in March 2014, Erdogan allegedly sought the help of Ounce to bury a recent corruption investigation. In the phone conversation, Erdogan is heard telling his son to meet with then Turkish Airlines chairman Hamdi Topku, who is a close friend of Ounce to ask for the probe to be buried. 